Hello there, this is Mark II. Welcome back to uh, my Drifter series. It's sort of uh, semi every now and then that I do it. And uh, we've been waiting for modules to come out and they're not quite out yet. So I thought it would be a good chance to do a, kind of a quick episode, hopefully, just to, to tie up some loose ends. Hence the name, Loose Ends. So uh, what we're going to do now, one of the things that I missed in past episodes was uh, the... Uh, mine launcher. So we're on a mission now, and we're going to go to YJZ8, and uh, we're going to find uh, somebody that needs to be assassinated, and uh, we're going to do it with uh, proximity mines, which we have several. Here we are. It's dangerous here. Uh, let's see, but I will show you where we've got our proximity mines. We have eight of them, eight proximity mines. And uh, in order to launch those, you have to have a, uh, a launcher. Probably would have been smarter to see where the uh, actual mission is before, where the bad guy is before we, uh, you know, if you're, does that say, there it is, there it is. We'll go that way. Uh, we're in the Shrike today. Um, so we'll, over here in YJZ8, we'll be doing a couple of things. First of all, we're going to be demonstrating the uh, the mine launcher and the proximity mine and how they work in combat. And then we're going to be doing just a little bit of trading. I've not really done trading. Oh my goodness, it looks like this is one of those uh, systems with a uh, um, an asteroid belt. Well, that's that's going to cramp my style a little bit. So I'm going to stop here and negotiate through this so that uh, you're not, like, tied up looking at the rocks. Be back in a second. Okay, as luck would have it, I had to go through the complete system in order to get over here. I had to go through the asteroid belt twice. Oh, and here comes the bad guy. Oh, by the way, Celsius is in beta, and it's or Drifter is in beta, and it's available from Celsius Game Studios. There's a link in the description. Um, I think I got that in in time, I hope. Let's see, now, where did the bad guy go? Should be around here somewhere. What you gotta do is look for your mission objective. I know I saw his red dot there, but I was so, uh, uh, predisposed or indisposed, whatever it was, confused and, and befuddled by, uh, by trying to get out the required statement about how Drifter is in beta. Ah, there he is. And he's hitting me, and he's angry. Okay, now we're going to be going at him with uh, with proximity mines. They work very much like um, like a missile. We're going to lock in on him. Got to be pretty close to the middle. Whoops. I wonder if I actually shot. Yeah, I did. You see how he he lost some? Now let's. That wasn't very good. So let's. Uh, well. Let's wait until the next pass. I'm just going to go by. I'm not going to try to shoot him this time. I'm just going to avoid his fire so that we got a better uh, better view without the sun in the background. We do have all these nebulas back here. But it's just like, the, uh, like a missile. We're going to activate our missile, release it, and there it goes. It's a little, little bubble of light there. Looks like we launched two of them, actually. And I don't know. Maybe we missed him. Let's try it again. Here he goes. There goes another one. We seem to be shooting more of them, extra ones. Uh, we definitely hit him that one time. I might be out of them. See, this is one of the things. We had eight of them, and um, each one is just one. Like with missiles, you get five missiles with one. Um, yeah, I think I think we're out. We are out. Look at there, zero. Okay, I'm gonna have to take this guy out with um, whatever weapons I have on this this ship. I don't remember what it is. Oh, okay. We got. I think that's proton pulse rifle. So it should. Not, it's just a Kukri. It's gonna be pretty easy. Uh. Oh, that's a that's a shrike. I don't think that's the same guy I was shooting at before. 
Uh, because that other one was a kukri, and this one here is a shrike. We probably destroyed the uh, kukri pretty quickly. I've lately been using beam weapons more often. Um, just because they're a little easier to put on target. And of course one of the problems with the proton pulse rifle is it sucks up a lot of energy so you're soon going to be down to your minimal energy level and you're not going to be getting uh, full firepower with this weapon. So uh, you got to kind of wait till you see the whites of their eyes as the, as the saying goes. And uh, that's what we'll be doing here. Luckily the station's nearby. And also, luckily, those uh, proton pulse rifles do quite a bit of damage when you do hit. Uh, so here we go. We should be able to finish this guy pretty quickly. He's uh, he's kind of on the uh, on his last legs. See, I would have been able to hit him with a beam weapon there, but not with a with a blast weapon. Okay, we win. Now let's go pick that up, and uh, I'm going to head over to that station. Oh, half the fun is seeing what's in the container. Basic homing missiles. Great. Okay, so we're going to go over to that station over there. And, um, well, that was the, uh, anyway, that was the, uh, the proximity mine, which I think is a misnomer. If you look at it, it looks more like, I would call it a photon torpedo, if it were me naming it. Because the proximity mine, to me, that's something you leave and it stays static until something comes by to the proximity of the mine and, and then it blows up. Uh, still, if you do manage to hit with them, and I, I haven't used them very much, but um, heavenly, we only got like one or two hits in out of eight. So um, that wasn't a very good, uh, very good batting average there. So the next thing we're going to do is pull into this station here, and we're going to do a little trading. Um, actually, while we're at it, let's make sure that we actually did complete our mission. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, we finished it. Uh, got a little extra on there, too. So uh, here comes the station. Could have slipstreamed over here and saved a few seconds, but, but we didn't. Uh, you know what I did look at? I looked at the um, uh, the pathway or the, the kind of the basic ideas that they want for future versions of Drifter. It's pretty interesting stuff. I think it, it might be in the wiki or the forum, one of the two. I'm not sure where it was. Okay, what we're going to do, since uh, we didn't really pick up anything except some um, homing missiles, and we're out of, uh, out of our other stuff is what we're going to do here is going to go over to the mission office since that is not a that mission wasn't tied to um, a particular system we can go ahead and complete that mission now and uh, then what we're going to do is I know what I want to do I know what we're going to do we're going to go back to my home base and uh, that's Toyi uh, right here did I select the right one I hope so. Let's see, what does that say? Yeah, that's Toyi, all right. So we're going to go to Toyi, and uh, we can do some trading. So any of these green ones means we'll make money if we trade that. Red one would mean we would lose money going over there. Now, we want to go with big money. So we can get industrial robots. That's 26250 would be our profit per unit. The unit is 1,000 kilos. Now, it's 1250 would be for nanobots. But those are only 100, so to get the same volume to take up as much of our uh, precious cargo space in nanobots as industrial robots, we would be 10 times as much, so 12,500. We're still better off pound for pound getting the industrial robots if we can afford them at 343,000 per unit. Now we could get station components and make uh, 2,500,000 per but I do not have 100,000 kilos of free cargo space, and I do not have 48,750,000 credits. So we're not going to be doing station components or colony components. Uh, we're going to go with industrial robots, 
and mining equipment wouldn't be too bad either. You also look at this. Now, as a business person, you look at ROI. You're going to say, I'm spending, you know, I'm my my product that I'm putting on the shelf is costing me $1,000, and I'm going to sell it for $1,500, so I've got a 50% markup. Uh, it doesn't really work quite that way. That's probably, well, it does kind of, but uh, that may not be the best model. You might think of yourself more as a truck driver, and you're saying, how much am I going to make for this load of stuff? So you got to balance it. It's kind of like calculus. you got to figure how much room do I have, how many units are available, and how much is it going to cost me to get over there, and then what's my total profit going to be. So rather than thinking about as being a, a merchant, think of it as being a truck driver. It'd be, I would think would be a better um, frame of mind. Oh, well, look, chemical processors. I'd make a bit more on chemical processors. So let's go with chemical processors or industrial robots or nanobots. All right, so let's go over to the... Oh, but one thing I also want to do here is I want to um, set this up. But you know what? I don't even want to do that yet because the next place we're going to go is Elax. So I'm going to look at Elax first. And let's look at theirs. Now in Elax, look at there, there's a lot more options here. But nanobots is not one of them, so we're not going to buy nanobots. Matter of fact, the best thing for us to get here would be supercomputers. Don't have room for fusion reactor. So superconductor, supercomputers would be number one. Superconductors would be number two. Maybe scanning equipment. So let's go with superconductors, supercomputers then superconductors. Okay, let's head over to the uh, uh, way over this part of the unit. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't worry about that. That wasn't a problem. I did that on purpose. Okay, now here we are at supercomputers was our number one choice. They got 51 available, so I'm going to buy as many as possible. That's the biggest uh, profit per unit that I can make. So I'm going to buy a maximum. I can get 34 of them. Why is that the maximum? Because I'm basically out of money, down to 39k. So I can't afford anything else. That's fine. Um, oh man, look at that. I don't have room for any more of them. I'm going to have to come back and get the rest of those things. Or I could just sell them. Let's do that. I forgot I was in a smaller ship right now. Let's just sell... Uh, There we go. Okay, good enough. That brings me back to about where I should be. And buying and selling prices are the same. So you don't, you know, it's not like a bid-ask sort of thing like you would do in a commodities market. So you don't have to worry about making little errors like that. And forgetting that you're in a tiny little ship that only holds 9,000 kilos as opposed to the one you're used to driving around that carries about 75,000 or 100,000 or whatever it is. So anyway, okay, now we go back. We already have our course plotted, and we're going to head over to um, Elax next. So we're going to go over there and uh, and sell that stuff. And the part in between here and there is uh, not particularly interesting. So um, I think I had about 16 million credits going into this. Probably would have been good to uh, mark that. Uh, but anyway, we'll uh, I'll try to remember to put in an annotation in the. Uh, in the video, so that you'll know how much we, uh, how much profit we made here. So anyway, going to, uh, it won't be much. It's a small ship. So anyway, I'm gonna just meet you in Elax, I believe, is the next place. Okay, here we are in Elax, and uh, we're gonna go to our stock market here, and we're going to sell our supercomputers. We're gonna sell all of them. Uh, only lets us sell nine because that's all we got. And that brings up to about 16.4 million credits. Uh, I'm pretty sure we made about 150k on that, which is probably about right. Nine times 25, that's about 175, I guess. So anyway, um, there's that. Now for the next thing is going to require um, going to... Uh, I'm going to need another ship. So... I'll see you again in about a second in Toyi.
No, actually, let's not go to Toyi. Let's meet in another system, and I don't know what system it is just yet, but it'll be a system with another one of my ships out of my vast fleet. So uh, we'll see you in about a second. Okay, here we are in uh, whatever system this is. Uh, I can tell you what system this is. Febu. It's a mining system. And the thing that I wanted to show you here is a discovery that I made. Now back in Rock On, you might remember when we were doing mining, I said one thing you need if you're going to mine is uh, mining lasers. Well, as it turns out, check this out. That's a Neutron Lancer. It makes quite a decent uh, mining option. So you can really uh, get in here quite quickly. The disadvantage that I've seen with it is it seems like um, you don't get quite as much and you can also destroy your um, uh, your ore with it it's, if you're not very careful. So you see where yeah, there go. There we go. But you destroy you 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 break them down so quickly. I think that there's probably uh, an economic advantage to using. Uh oh, this is going to be tough. Okay, that was the easy way to do it. So you can always fight your way out if you're using neutron lancers as a mining laser. I think that any um, any beam weapon will work. But these are basically one hit, and you uh, and you're picking up some um, some rocks here. So you can just sit here and uh, and just blast them away with, uh, with the neutron lancer. Um, I hope that's not a bug because it's really nice. It's also at, at advantage uh, given that. Um, you know, if you ever get into a fight in a mining, you know, in not a mining, but in a, an asteroid belt like this, um, chances are whoever you get in a fight with is um, armed with mining lasers. So um, anyway, that's just the helpful hip, uh, helpful tip of the day. Like I say, I hope it's not a bug. It's nice to uh, to just blast these things away in in the one or two blasts rather than having to sit through the whole uh, process of wearing them down with uh, with mining lasers. Two hits for a big one. Uh, Alright. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Uh, it's called Loose Ends. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Probably next time will involve uh, modules because they should be coming out literally any day now, and uh, and that'll be a big day too because we're all looking forward to it. And uh, be sure to check out ooh impure hexite that's rare. Um, be sure to check out uh, that uh, roadmap for the for drifter development. It's uh, It's uh, quite interesting. I didn't see anything about multiplayer in there, which is unfortunate because I think that uh, multiplayer would be amazing in this game. I think it would be fantastic if you could get on a server and play with it. I don't know, you know, a few people or a thousand people or whatever. It's uh, it would just be awesome. I think. I think it would be a uh, Especially with some of the other things that definitely are on the roadmap, I think that uh, that that would just um, be a game changer in a lot of ways. Because uh, right now the only really big multiplayer things are role-playing games, as far as I know. Uh, you know, World of Warcraft and so forth, and uh, and they're great games. But sometimes, you know, you need you need a you need a blaster or something. Not a sword. Ooh, look, or over there. Anyway, we'll see you then. So I hope you tune in and uh, have a good time until then, and uh, and enjoy your uh, anything. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you next time. Bye.